going to have a little customer panel here, and uh, we want to hear from customers and partners. So let me first let each of the gentlemen introduce themselves. Anthony, let's start with you. Hi, yeah, I'm Anthony Randall, and I work for Monsanto, and I'm responsible for identity and access management, strategy, roadmap, and architecture. Great. Joris? Hi, my name is uh, Joris Havercourt. I work for uh, Atos. Um, I'm the manager of cloud transformation services and Atos fertilization services. Great. Hi, my name is Richard Vesta, and I work for EOH Group. I'm the director of the cloud services uh, division uh, in South Africa. Okay, and again, my name is John Delk with the new title of marketing analyst. <clears throat> Hopefully, you get that joke. So during the keynote, we talked about the complexities brought on by cloud and BYOD, mobile, and social identity. And Anthony, we said that those trends introduced a new level of complexity for enterprises. So can you tell us a little bit about what that complexity means to the solutions that you're delivering at Monsanto? Sure, yeah, and we're seeing a real, I guess to coin a phrase, nexus of forces taking place right now. And we're seeing internal and external boundaries dissolve. So, but in some respects, I think, you know, we're, we're having to do a lot of the same things. Um, you know, the core tenants of identity management, at least, remain the same from a, an administration, access, and intelligence point of view. I think, uh, you know, some of the complexities from our standpoint need to be managed and, and processes and governance put in place and a, and a plan and a strategy for how to get there. So we're more proactive versus being reactive. There's a big bag of tricks out there in terms of technology and we need to take a pragmatic approach to figuring out how those solutions, technologies can help us. Okay, great. Great. In addition to the complexity we talked about, we talked about speed and the pace uh, and obviously that speed of business accelerating. So yours, how does that change, change the way you at Atos are delivering services? So what we see happen is that uh, specifically the speed of business that our customers is changing. So when we do workload migrations into our cloud solutions, it's very important that we start to think about how we can standardize and highly automate our transformation services into cloud. Okay, great, great. And then Richard, as a service provider and a provider of these services, uh, how has EOH moved to take advantage of this complexity and the speed trend that we've been talking about this morning? So we're quite excited about uh, the speed and the way the dynamic is changing within our market. Um, Many organizations today within South Africa are looking for their flexibility and scalability and being able to move rapidly towards the cloud. What we actually did was we built out an infrastructure uh, and leveraged uh, technology, a NetIQ Cloud Manager, which actually allowed customers to start maintaining and getting that, that almost the step up in terms of the flexibility, being able to deploy the workloads when they required it. Um, as well as uh, scalability, so being able to increase resources on demand uh, and meet their business requirements and the demand within their businesses. So we're quite excited about it and it seems to be working quite well in, 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 in the social market. That's great. So Anthony, Richard just talked about some of the solutions they're providing. How about at Monsanto? In response to these challenges, what kind of solutions are you providing? So I think there's a combination of, of both solutions and again, you know, processes that we need to introduce to uh, help solve these problems and uh, you know react to business challenges and uh, you know from a information standpoint, I talked about information and business intelligence. I think that's one of the primary areas as we uh, you know look to tackle some of these newer complexities with cloud BYOD and and getting a good handle and introducing technology, bringing in technology like access governance to to discover what's out there, to see what users have access to, I think is uh, that's something primary that we're doing right now at Monsanto, and, and to help develop that and, and build better identity models with uh, things like virtual directories and directories to consolidate that identity view to help that convergence of services to, to better represent business technology and how users do things. That's that's important, and, and looking at other technologies that help us get to the cloud to do a better job of working with the cloud providers from a traditional federation standpoint to introduce things like identity synchronization, a better provisioning model as we interact with the cloud, and, and as well with uh, you know access technologies, uh, thinking of things like VDI, 
um, and uh, different mobile application management technologies to, to really lock down but simplify the user experience. Okay, great. George, as a provider from an external perspective, how about you? What kind of solutions do you guys see meeting these challenges? So besides um, offering our own cloud solutions, obviously things like uh, IaaS platforms and desktop as a service, um, one of the things that we developed is uh, a cloud migration services portfolio in which we offer yeah, multi-level migration methods into our cloud solutions. Um, one of the other things is um, from uh, delivering the IT for the Olympic Games, uh, we developed uh, an Atos high performance security solution so we can basically track everything that's going on uh, during the Olympic Games or in any other case and see um, if we can filter down all the events into as less critical events as possible so that we know what to react on. Okay, great. So Richard, as we think about the audience out here of uh, customers and partners and we think about these challenges driving us out in the future over the next few years, what advice would you give those sitting in the audience about how they're going to take advantage of the opportunities that we've been talking about this morning? So John, I think as a, as a customer, I think one needs to start by not being scared about what cloud can actually offer uh, and the different technologies out there. I think a good starting point is understand what you actually have within your own organization. Using technologies like placement recon, you, you can get a really good understanding of what you can virtualize or what should be stay, staying in a, in a physical state. Um, and from there, it's not about losing control of your data. I think there's many technologies that NetIQ have actually launched in the market that will allow customers to be able to manage their infrastructure as well as move less mission critical data into an enterprise or a public cloud environment. From a partner perspective, um, I think partners are, are critical to the puzzle. Um, they that link between the service provider and the customer, and in most regards, partners have a, a much better relationship with customers than service providers do, uh, especially in the outsourcing space. So I think partners need to uh, really look at the technology that's available and see how they can support the service providers still to maintain that outsourcing capability, but allow uh, customers to move on this journey towards you know, total cloud computing. And from a service provider perspective, um, I think don't try and win everything. Uh, I think you need to realize that uh, something like NetIQ Cloud Manager can really support uh, a hybrid capability, managing infrastructure in a customer's data center, as well as allowing that capability of managing workloads in your own data center as a service provider. So it's a journey. Um, there's no right or wrong place to start or where to start. Uh, and I think uh, it's an exciting journey that each one of those members should be taking uh, jointly to obviously a successful cloud uh, experience. Great, great answer. As an enterprise architect, you have a different perspective. So how would you advise the audience in terms of what to think about as, as these future challenges are going to come rolling at us? Yeah, so I think, <clears throat> you know, just taking a step back, uh, Apple, Apple raised the bar in terms of, uh, you know, ease of simplicity of uh, applications and devices that are very easy to use. And I think that user experience is, is you know, coming into the enterprise. So, so expectations are high. And I think we need to uh, simplify that whole user experience, make it easy to self-manage, uh, to provide applications that are easy to use. Uh, and at the same time, make sure the infrastructure is converging around that solution to provide that from an information standpoint. So I think requirements are important, understanding what some of the business goals are and functional requirements of uh, what's being demanded or asked for by the business. And as I said before, uh, strategy and planning and having a process in place to, to be proactive, yet be able to react and provide decision frameworks for direction uh, that we need to take to support this, you know, as I said, nexus of forces, these many different technologies and capabilities that are now, you know, becoming more and more prevalent. Great, great. That ease of use comment is very appropriate. And then yours, from a perspective of a partner, uh, how would you advise the audience? Well, I think I can give a pretty short answer to that. I think um, bring your own device will happen regardless or whether you implement a strategy for it, uh, for it or not people will start bringing their devices. So what I can suggest is look at all the solutions that are out there, look at the products, and make sure that you get a proper strategy for implementing it. 
and don't wait because people will start bringing in their laptops, their iPads, their, their everything. Okay, great, great. Okay, last question then, Richard. Tell us, why did you come to Brainshare? Well, my friends would say probably because of the mountains and the beautiful environment <laughs> that I'm in, but the, the, the real reason I come here is to come and get a, a really close-up look at the new innovations that NetIQ are actually presenting and taking to the market. Okay, great, great. Hey, I got new stuff. New stuff? I got new stuff. Can I show it? Uh, I, I guess okay. so. Hey, Gwen, what are you doing out here? Well, if you don't want me to come out here, you've got to secure your backstage access. Well, I don't have our engineers working on backstage security products yet. Come on. L let me show it. What are you going to show us? Well, hang on a minute. These guys all brought their own devices. They're on Facebook. I'm going to, let me check my status real quick, and then I'll show you something cool. All right, do it quick. Uh-oh. I forgot. I'm, I'm not allowed out here. <laughs> I've got an event that, uh, that I've got to take care of. You know, Richard, he said yes. I couldn't come to Brainshare unless I did training. And I don't want to take Richard off. Richard's the guy who paid somebody to throw something off the stage. <laughs> well, I, I got to do my training. Just a minute, and then I'll right. show you the demo. Hurry Just up. A, can you wait? Can you, did you do your training? No. If you hear coconuts, I just suggest you run. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm here on Facebook. I'm checking my event. And it's going to ask me to log in. And what I'm showing here is a future where social identity is mixed with your corporate directory and your email, and it's lightly securing some different things. Uh, I, in the middle of Nottingham Forest, I certainly don't want to uh, log in using my corporate credentials, so I want to mm -hmm. see what other options I've got. What's this? This is our social access product. It's a drop-in appliance that allows you to take input from social networks and lightly secure That's various cool. resources. So ladies and gentlemen, this is future. This is the future products. This is a social security product. And you don't have to go to the Congress for that. If you can come to NetIQ. So I'm already logged into Facebook. So I'm going to go ahead and pick Facebook as my identity provider, even though I could have used any of them. And since it's the first time I've come to this application, it's going to ask me if it's all right to share my Facebook information with my corporation. Okay. I'm going to say yes. And it's going to show me a list of various things that I could have access to, some, some lightly secured things. I don't get corporate fi financials. I don't get to find out who really is the vice president or president. <laughs> but uh, I got access to the corporate blog. I am so updating your picture later. All right. I'm supposed to go to training. But unfortunately, I don't have access. I'm going to have to do some kind of step up authentication because nobody would really want to secure uh, critical resources with just a social login. So I'm going to do a step up authentication here. Okay. And we're going to talk about what could be in the future. I'm going to turn on my, it's going to ask me to uh, turn on my camera, and then it's going to walk me through a series of random prompts. And I will have to respond to those prompts. And then you'll get to see those. All right. I Click have my camera. mobile Record. with me. Record. Hold up one finger. Are you holding up the right finger? I don't work for you anymore. I can do any finger. <laughs> All right. Hurry up. Four fingers. Live long and prosper. Die young in poverty. <laughs> or we can just be boring. Ah, the net IQ sign. Web developers everywhere know this. Begin tag, head, in tag. Hmm? Capture complete. <laughs> oh my goodness, you That's have just a harsh. <laughs> what it's really trying to do is, is compare my social credentials and my social login with people who are online and work at my same company and would have permission to grant me access. Fortunately, my fake Facebook profile has more friends than my real one. So let's try that again. We hope so. <laughs> yeah. Just four? That's who's online now. And, and can, it includes and me. Still. All right. Send it to Dipto. Okay, you've got to help me out now, or well, I'm not going to get my training. Let's see if I get you here. All right, I have Dwayne. 
This is Dwayne with one, showing one finger. This is Dwayne showing four fingers. Here's his developed gesture. All right. So in social access and social security, unlike corporate world, we don't approve and deny. We approve everything in the corporate world. In the social world, we like or unlike. So I'm going to like Dwayne. I was afraid he was going to unfriend me. So just send the approval. OK. So I'm here in Facebook. And if I click to refresh, I see I've got new messages. See all. Got one in my inbox, from Dipto. And I'm approved. Well, now I can do my online training and keep Richard off my back. But it's online training. We all know how that goes, right? <laughs> I'm going to start the online training in the background while I do something I'd much rather do. So ladies and gentlemen, you've now seen all the NetIQ products in action that's helping you build solutions at the speed of business. What you saw in the demonstration today are three types of products. Products that are brand new, the one with an asterisk, products that are been refreshed, and the products that are future facing, coming to a theater near you. Let me make a comment that in the last 12 months, we have refreshed each and every one of our product lines. So there are a lot more in the IT Central. I would encourage you to go and spend time with our experts and get a sense for what these products can do for you. Thank you. Thanks, Tipto. Thanks, Dwayne. Thank you, panelists. So that ends our keynote today. A couple of things that I want to wrap up with. First of all, I hope you've taken advantage of your uh, coffee bar card and have stopped by the pit stop that NetIQ has sponsored and gotten a chance to uh, participate there, as well as in IT Central. Uh, the NetIQ uh, arena there includes a race simulator around this theme of speed. So make sure you stop by there. So later today, take advantage of the learning opportunities, the sessions, the relationship building opportunities. Join us at IT Central tonight for Meet the Experts, or probably more appropriate, the Margaritaville party. And then tomorrow, we'll have the NetIQ Partner Breakfast first thing in the morning, more sessions during the day, and then the conference party in the evening with Sawyer Brown. So that ends the keynote. Thanks, and have a great day.